start today's lecture with a puzzle. Um, <coughs> I went, I prepared here an experiment. Um, actually, it is that uh, uh, this lens produces an image over there. Um, if I turn off the lights, probably it will be better to see it better. And can you see the image over here? <coughs> Have it like this. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> well, I have a puzzle now. What will happen <coughs> uh, to the image if I cover the top part of the lens? Well, that <coughs> there are various options. That nothing will happen. Um, you, once some, uh, somebody can suspect that uh, top part of the image will disappear. Uh, you can suspect that bottom part of the image uh, can disappear. Or maybe left and right side of the image will disappear. Um, what are the options you could see? Yes? Oh, that, is, that it will become dim, but entire image, right? Uh, all right, so who believes that the <coughs> part of the image will disappear? Uh, all right, so now when we believe that, that part of image, let's say that I will cover the top part of the image. So who believes the top, uh, sorry, uh, top part of the lens? Uh, so who believes that uh, top part of the image will disappear? Uh, who believes that the bottom part of the image will disappear? All right, so if we cover the top, the bottom part of the image will disappear. Uh, who, believe that, uh, who believes that nothing will happen? Uh, who believes that it will become dimmer? All right. <coughs> um, how about having some justifications? Uh, and you maybe, could you give an argument? Why do you think that the top, no, that the bottom part uh, will disappear? Uh, the way I understand it, the light is being uh, bent through the lens, travels through the focal point, and then ends up on the opposite side of the screen, so that if we cover the top half, the light that would be going through down to the bottom part... I, yeah, I understand that. Uh -huh. So what, uh, what Andrew is saying, <coughs> if we recall how we made the uh, ray, when we draw the ray diagram, Uh, we started with an object like this, let's say, and I say that this is the lens. Uh, if we take a parallel parallel ray, which is passing through the top part of the image, well, so if I block it, I mean, let's say that the focal point is here, this ray will not be able to pass through the lens and so so the, the and all the rays which pass through the top part of the lens won't be able to to pass uh, through the lens and uh, <coughs> what uh, I mean we can uh, well in our arrangement we have uh, I mean this is the ray diagram for our arrangement we got an image with, which is uh, inverted. Um, <coughs> all right. Uh, now, I think that another one was that that uh, uh, that it will become dimmer. Who was uh, uh, voting for dimmer? Would you like to answer that? No. no? <laughs> okay. Anybody else would? Would be uh, would like to argue for the dimmer one. <coughs> well, how about if we if we do the experiment first, and then try to figure out why it happens like uh, why it happened like it did. <coughs> uh, how about if I take one of the homeworks? Oops. 
Can you see the image now? No? Okay, so we have to turn it off completely. And this is what happens. So, actually, it indeed does get dimmer. You see that? But the entire image is still formed. Well, how come? Because I thought that Andrew's, Andrew's justification was quite convincing. So, where was the error here? We say uh, no. It's not the. It isn't the argument. It's not because the light was able to pass through the paper. Uh, and you have you found that? The light, light rays are a way of uh, simplifying it. But from every point, light is admitted in all directions. So from any point on the image, it's going to go through the lens at you know at every point, right. Yeah, because you remember that image is formed when the uh, light coming from a point meets at a point does not matter along which ray now we had uh, 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 four or three in case of a lens uh, rays which we were able to trace without a problem uh, for the remaining we will have first to find the image in order to trace the rays so if I take an arbitrary ray Let's say that I'm thinking about a ray. Well, now that one was covered, but how about this one? Uh, object ray like this. And so if I take object ray like this, it is not one of those rays which we are able easily to trace. However, when we already located the image, we know how it is going to be refracted. How? how this ray is going to be refracted. If I didn't draw these two rays, I wouldn't be able to determine uh, or tr to trace the ray. However, now I am, because a lens is such a, uh, an element that if light originates from a point, after refraction, it has to meet approximately at a point, which means that the light traveling along this ray has to go through that point. So that uh, after refraction, the image ray will be refracted this way. And let's say I'll choose another ray. This one will be refracted that way. And actually, if I cover the, uh, if I cover the top, uh, I will have only rays, only these rays hitting the lens. Now, after the reflection of refraction, they will continue and will be refracted in such a way that they will also meet at a point. So, this entire, I mean, whatever shape it is, half of a cone will meet at another apex over here. Do you understand that? Yes. So it is that each part of the lens actually produces an image. If I, if I took a lens and broke it into the pieces, each piece will be able to create an image. Um, okay, so let's put this away. And I wanted now to uh, to discuss uh, a lens equation and see and at the same uh, time actually uh, see the ray diagram to uh, recognize where the image is formed and what type of an image uh, we are going to have so let's start with the ray diagram and on the ray diagram I will pick ray so that it is easy to figure out where the image is uh, formed Uh, 
let's make focal point uh, 15 centimeters away. Actually, it is <coughs> uh, now my question is, where am I going to get the image depending on this where I, where I put the object? So imagine that I'm putting object anywhere. Let's say that object of a, a height 10 centimeters. I'm going to put this object 10 centimeters, I mean 10 centimeter high object, I'm going to put it somewhere. And uh, let's see where the image is going to be. Um, well, <coughs> we can figure out whether uh, or write down the function position of the image versus position of the object from thin lens equation. So if we start with the thin lens equation, inverse of position of the object plus inverse of position of the image. is equal to the inverse of the uh, focal length. Uh, inverse of focal length actually appears quite often in calculations and because of that uh, we even develop a name for the inverse of focal length because saying inverse of focal length is a kind of awkward, it's a long phrase so rather than saying inverse of a focal length of an element we say focusing power of the element. So inverse of focal length is um, focusing power of an element. And uh, probably uh, you could, you have already, you were exposed, a lot of you were exposed to focusing power of an element when you went to an eye doctor. Um, now focal length is measured in meters, so uh, focusing power will be uh, one over meter, and one over meter is uh, referred to as a diopter. So uh, you know that glasses, strength of the or power of the glasses is measured in diopters. If uh, that number is positive, it means that the focal length is positive as well, so the glasses, uh, the lenses in the glasses are converging lenses. And uh, for diverging lenses, focusing power is uh, negative. Well, anyway, coming back to this one. So let's now solve for position of the image. Uh, from this formula, we are going to have that it is 1 over f minus 1 uh, inver or focusing power of the uh, element inverse of the position of the uh, uh, object to minus uh, one. Um, how about if we draw this function? Yeah, so here I have position of the image versus position of the function. I can think that this is function of position of the uh, object. Um, how about if I draw it here? So, on this axis, I'm going to mark position of the object and this uh, uh, position of uh, the image. Uh, let's say that I consider uh, a lens like this one or this one so that focus, uh, so that focal point is, uh, object focal point is on the object rays and image focal point is on the image rays. In other words, focal length is positive. Uh, I will mark value f over here. All right, <coughs> let's now analyze this function. So let's start with uh, a very negative value for position, uh, minus infinity. Well, if it is minus infinity, I can find out that uh, position of the image then is going to be at the focal point, right? Because if I put minus infinity for S prime, this is zero. Here I have one over focus le focal length. Inverse of that will give me focal length. So 
uh, the function, how much did I mark here? 10. So at minus infinity, uh, <coughs> uh, the function approaches uh, focal length. Um, now, what, wha what happens if we bring the, so now negative value for object, uh, object position, it means that what kind of object we are talking about. And really, it will be it will be a situation over, over here. How about if we if we draw it? Where should I mark the uh, object when it is when it, its position is negative? Let's say that the light is coming from this side. And actually, right now, I can <coughs> if I don't know where the object is, I can only trace one ray. Uh, which ray? which object ray I know that this object ray is how that I know how the object ray is going to look like no matter where I put the object for which ray parallel ray correct so object parallel ray is going to look like that now let's make it 10 And uh, object parallel ray, after being refracted, will pass through focal point. Which focal point? Image focal point, correct. So, so this ray, which travels from the left-hand side, no matter actually if we have a real object or, or virtual object, this is how the ray should be traced. So if, it, if the object is real, it's going to be here. And uh, if it is uh, virtual, it is going to be there. And the position of the uh, object is going to be negative. A virtual object, positive for a uh, real object. Well, I started... I started with uh, negative, uh, very negative. So it is far, far away on this side. And if this is the case, I see that uh, object uh, image is formed at the focal at the focal point. Now, what happens if, as I bring the image closer and closer to the lens? Yes, so so uh, it, it becomes less and less negative. Uh, well, see what happens with the chief ray. Let's say if I have, if I put an object over here, chief ray is going to look like that, right? Coming out from this side. So here will be object chief ray, and it will be refracted, and it will be image chief ray. Do we see where the image is going to be formed? How about if I draw it? So let's say that I put it here. It's a virtual object. Chief ray is going to look like it's chief ray always passes through the center of the lens, through the uh, crosses the lens at the principal uh, principal axis. So here is the second image ray. Can we find out where the where the image is? It is where the well, if I put my eye over here, the two rays should appear to originate from the same point. Can I see that? Right, it is here. So, we have image over there. All right, now how about if I bring it closer? If I bring the object closer. Let's say to this point. So chief ray now looks like that. And here is the image. You see that? Now how about I want to draw 
the object, but just use the ruler to trace the chief ray. As, I've, as it passes through these two points. It's a chief ray bends like that. And the image is always formed where the chief ray crosses this uh, image focal ray. And then when I get, oh, and when I get to zero, they both will overlap. Let's see actually if they will overlap. So if I put zero for S, uh, if I put zero for S, um, actually it's probably even better to see over here. If I z put zero for S, so this is infinite, then I see, now this is a, a finite number so in order to, to, to cover this one, uh, to, to, to balance it, it uh, this one has to be minus infinite, right? So, so that when I put it on the other side, I will have 1 over 0 is equal to 1, uh, one over 0. So when S is 0, S prime has to be uh, uh, 0 as well. And so <coughs> the position of the image over here was changing like that. And actually we saw it. Yeah, over here on this side, position of the image has a positive value. Right? So we start when we, when we put the object far, far away. Uh, the image is going to be formed at the focal point. And then as we bring image closer and closer to the lens, the uh, image becomes closer and closer to the lens as well. However, position of the object is negative, which means that the object is virtual. Position of the image is positive, meaning that the image is real. Uh, now let's see what happens as we pass that, uh, that zero and start approaching uh, focal length. So S becomes closer and closer to focal length. Well, if S becomes closer and closer to focal length, well, this one, this expression becomes closer and closer to zero. And now we have inverse of that, so we will have plus or minus infinity. And depending on this, from which side we are approaching, which term is greater, we will have either plus infinity or minus infinity. And in the result, the plot will, will have an asymptote at the focal, focal length. So uh, as we approach from the smaller values, we are going to get more and more negative value for the position of the image. Image still is going to be virtual because the values are negative. Let's try to see uh, where do we have it on the diagram. So we have to imagine now that, and actually it happens between, uh, for uh, positions of the object between zero and focal length. So something like having it, well, let's start from this, from this location. Yes, a chief ray. Now we look like that. Well, we see that the rays diverge, which means that the image is formed at the extension. So when I draw extensions, image is going to be here. And as I move it further away, yeah, so let's say that I put object here, I still see that when I draw the chief ray, the rays diverge. Image is formed by the extensions. And eventually, when the object bec is placed at the focal object focal point, what can I say about the rays? I'm just looking at the diagram. Now recognize that this distance is equal to this distance. Well, this height is equal to this height. 
So these two triangles are similar, right? So the two rays are parallel. All right, where two parallel rays cross? They don't, or you can think that they cross far, far away. And now, if I was coming out from the right-hand side, well, I had diverging, right? The image was formed on the left-hand side of the lens, so it was virtual image. And as I get closer and closer and closer to that focal length, that image moves further and further to the left. Well, it corresponds to getting S prime value more and more negative. Well, but now when we cross that focal point, well, how about, yeah, if I think it this way. Now I see that if object is placed here, image is going to be formed there. And now if I get closer and closer to the focal point, that image escapes to the right. Uh, <coughs> so we have another asymptote over here. I mean, the same asymptote, this vertical asymptote. And I have a <coughs> relationship between position of the object and position of the image like that. So this time, image is real. Its uh, po position is positive. And uh, eventually, let's see what will happen if I move further and further away. Yes, so the chief ray becomes more and more uh, parallel to the principal axis. And eventually, when the image is, uh, sorry, when the object is real and placed in at infinity, the image is formed again at the focal point. So uh, this line is again the, the asymptote. <coughs> all right, yeah, so here are the, all the uh, combinations for uh, having object and, uh, and image, uh, depending on this, where we place uh, what. Um, why don't we have an exercise before I, I continue with, uh, uh, with uh, the lecture? How about if we consider certain configuration and try to trace uh, the rays uh, to find the, the image. Where did I put that black pen? Ah, here. And uh, I will allow you to, to choose the arrangement. So, um, why don't we actually, uh, yeah, so solve a problem with a, uh, or draw a ray diagram with a virtual object? And um, what kind of lens would you like to have, a converging or diverging? And I'll try, I'll try to, uh, to pull your leg today. So I will draw wrong lines, and I want you to catch me. Okay, so we'll, let's say that we have a, <coughs> and how about if I even uh, change uh, direction? So let's say that I'm putting here a virtual object and I have here a diverging lens. Uh, to, to, to identify that it is a virtual object, I will mark crossed lines, um, I mean broken lines, and in order to indicate that it is a, a diverging lens, uh, diverging lenses in air, if we make a lens from, from, a, uh, from a piece of uh, glass, um, so it, it will be a convex uh, lens. The lens in the middle will have to be thinner than at the edge. Uh, so, uh, in the thin lens approximation, we mark it 
with, uh, with arrows like these. Uh, a thin lens means that thickness over here is relatively small. Uh, because uh, let me make a digression what's the difference between a thin lens and, and uh, thick lens. Uh, <coughs> this is thin lens and this is thick lens. Uh, if you really analyze how the light is being refracted, you can recognize that it is refracted two times. It is refracted at this interface and then again at this interface. Now in a thin lens, in a thin lens approximation, uh, the two surfaces, you can imagine like having these two surfaces close to each other. So this point practically overlaps it at this point. So rather than thinking about two uh, refractions, uh, when, we make, when we approximate, we just draw a line through the center and say that it is refracted all only once, uh, resulting in the uh, refraction caused by the two surfaces. So. <coughs> Well, we don't have this, dis in a thin lens, we don't have this displacement inside. Uh, all right. So, uh, if it is, uh, I mean, now this is the uh, virtual object where the light should be coming from. How should I write, uh, how should I mark, and I will mark it in with uh, blue uh, uh, marker, the object rays, where the object rays should be, or which way the light is traveling in order to have a virtual object on this side for this lens. Well, we have only two options, right? Light, travel, light travels from the left to the right or from the right to the left. Which one will form the uh, I mean, for which one we will have the virtual object? From the right to the left, very good. Right, so object rays are on this side. Uh, now, how about focal points? Um, yeah, let's say I will mark, let's say that focal points are uh, Let's make one here and one here. Now, which one is which? For this particular lens, it is a diverging lens. Focal length is negative. So, which focal point is object focal point and which one is the image focal point? Uh, who votes for that this is object focal point. Who votes that it's image focal point? Those of you who voted that it's object focal point, you were right. This is object focal point, and this is image focal point. Object focal point is on the other side that object light is coming from. Uh, all right. Now, I'll, I will <coughs> try to pull your leg. Uh, which ray should you, should, uh, would you suggest me to use first to find the image? And it, it doesn't matter which one. Just say the name. Chris, can you say the name of a ray which you want to trace? Anybody remembers a parallel ray? Okay, object parallel ray. How about if I, well, so it is parallel to the principal axis. So definitely the line has to be horizontal. Now I will, let's say that I'll mark it this, oh, I was, I promised you to use the blue. No, thanks. 
right. Okay. If, so these are extensions. No, good. That way, correct. Indeed, now this is properly drawn object parallel ray. All right. <coughs> now, object parallel ray after refraction becomes image focal ray. Uh, oh, no, right? Correct. No, this would be wrong. Well, now you really confuse me. It has to go through at least one of those focal points. Th so through which one? Who votes that it's g it has to pass, uh, that the ray of its extension has to pass through this focal point? Nobody. Okay, who believes that it should pass through this one? Correct. It has to pass through this one. The ray of its extension. So definitely, oh, you had a problem with this point maybe? It has to be like that. The line is going to be like that. But what to do next? I, I, it's a problem. Um, <coughs> no. Yeah. Light is reflect, refracted. It doesn't travel back. If it were a mirror, this would be, a, this would be correct. All right. So only extension can be like this. Which means that light is refracted that way. It's correct. Yes, so if we have a virtual object over here and consider parallel object ray, parallel ray hits the lens at this location at the same height as the object is, and it is refracted, I mean, it, after refraction, it diverges. It moves away from the principal axis. All right, let's pick another ray. How about you? Yes. Would let's use chief ray, and actually for, for the lenses, it's always smart to use chief, le, uh, chief ray because chief ray travels straight through. Uh, should I, I mean, between this point and this point, should I draw a continuous line or broken line? Broken line, it's the extension. Here we had continuous. All right, how should I draw the... Uh, ray after refraction, so image chief ray, along the same line, except that now it is going to be continuous on this side and broken on the other side. So where is the image? Where? Over here, here we have the image. And what kind of an image we have here? Real or virtual? Which one? Who votes for virtual? Well, is it formed by the light? Or by the rays? Do rays meet at that point? Or are there extensions? Extensions. If extensions meet, it means that it is virtual. Correct. So here we have a virtual image. So from virtual object, we are getting here a virtual image. Uh, all right. Now, nature actually provided one more. Pa yes, uh, Robert. Right 
uh, you are using too, too, too many words. Yeah, extensions of the object array formed the object. So indeed, object was virtual, and extensions of the image array meet at a point, which means that the image is also virtual. In both cases, we have extensions. Right, okay. So, chief rays always overlap. And whenever you draw chief ray through the, through the lens, uh, <coughs> let's say that this is chief ray and light is traveling that way. Uh, how about if I mark it? So, th so this is object chief ray, and this is image chief ray. Object chief ray on the side where the light is approaching the lens should be marked with a continuous line. It, light travels along this ray. Now if I want to continue the object ray on the other side, light doesn't travel over there, so it should be a broken line. Now, it happens that <laughs> image chief ray overlaps with the uh, object chief ray, the line itself. Now, light travels, however, on the other side of the lens, the refracted light. So, image uh, chief ray should be continuous or solid on the other side than the uh, object uh, chief ray. Object chief ray is continuous on the side of the light approaching the lens. Image chief ray is continuous on the side of the light, re of, of the refracted light, moving away from the lens. And um, if I want to draw extension of the object ray, it is on the other side and the light is travels. So over there, object ray should be broken and if I want now to extend the image chief ray, it is on the side where the image, the refracted light, doesn't travel. Uh, so uh, on this side, uh, uh, image ray should be overlapped, s uh, broken. So object ray, object ray is continuous here, broken there image uh, chief ray is broken here and continues there however they overlap so so on the when you will be drawing the ray diagram <coughs> you will just have one continuous line uh, all right now the situation where nature put us here because look what kind of situations we uh, we investigated so far we placed an object at a certain location, we had a given lens, and then we were looking for the, for the location of the image. Uh, we solve a problem in which we wanted to have an image in particular location for a given lens. We look where to put the object. Um, actually, we also had uh, a problem where we, f where we had to figure out where to put the lens. Um, and actually the problem was where to put the lens and what type of a lens. Nature created a situation in which we have to find out uh, what kind of a lens we have to, uh, to put at a, at a particular uh, location. <coughs> I wanted to, to talk about a system, an eye, how an eye works. Uh, now, the front of an eye, actually it's a combination of two lenses which, and we will see on the next slide, which we'll, we'll discuss tomorrow, that if I put two lenses together, they still behave like a single lens. So, uh, in our eye we have, uh, well, a refractive surface 
with a fixed curvature, which means that it is a f uh, lens with a fixed focal length, uh, but we also have a, inside a refractive piece uh, for which we can change the curvatures with our muscles. In other words, we can change focal length. So, so this front of the eye acts like a lens with a variable or adjustable focal length and our muscles, with our muscles we control what focal length we choose. Now, why would we have to choose the focal length? Uh, it happens, it is because the uh, dimension of the eyeball is fixed. We can, nature in principle could create uh, a system in such a way that the lens is fixed and we could move, for example, the back of the eye, but it isn't how it created us. The, the distance from the lens to the back of the eye, which is light sensitive, and that light sensitive part of the eye is called retina. Uh, this distance is fixed, which means that this lens has to make an image uh, of whatever we look at. Now, when we look at something, we also cannot ask that something to stay in a particular location. Yeah? I walk where I want to. And you are not telling me, well, you are too far or too, too close. Move forward or backward. What you are doing, you are adjusting your lens to create my image on the retina. So, <coughs> it is that when we look at the particular object, it is placed at the particular location. Uh, so, it means that we ha that, that eye has to adjust its focal length to a, to a appropriate uh, way. And it works exactly like, uh, like, uh, like a lens. Uh, our eye, well, doesn't have an infinite uh, capability. We can only see, uh, in other words, we can only adjust the focal len length of that lens if the object is placed between the two characteristic points for a person. One point is called a near point of the, of the eye, and actually why don't you uh, determine where you have your near point of your eye. So close your one eye and look at the tip of the finger and bring the finger a, as close as possible so that you can still focus on it. So you can see it properly. The closest distance that you can see it normally is the near point of your eye. The far point of the eye is the point where you, wh how far you can move uh, it, uh, it away. And the <coughs> an average person, uh, I don't want to say that uh, with a normal vision, but it is considered that the normal vision, the person who doesn't have to wear glasses, can see has near point about 25 centimeters in front of the face and uh, far point is at infinity. Uh, now those of you who are nearsighted and most of us are nearsighted, and actually you can, those of you who wear glasses, you can find out where is your far point. Take off your glasses and see how far uh, you can see what is yeah, like I am nearsighted, and from, the, from this point, I cannot see uh, Robert properly. I can see, I can see Owen from this distance, so it is about two meters. My far point is about two meters away from me. I cannot see uh, Rob, uh, Robert, I cannot see uh, Eric. Uh, <coughs> All right. Uh, now, so, so if we trace uh, rays, if I, in order to have, I mean, I can recognize that if I look at this image, this has to be the size, I mean, uh, this object, this has to be the size of the image. I can use the chief ray. Now, I can recognize that in order to, to uh, create that image, the eye has to, I mean, the, the the muscles have to adjust itself so that focal point is exactly at that location. Now, those people who are far-sighted and near-sighted, they, yeah, near-sighted will produce 
cannot produce a focal point that's far from the, from the lens. Their focal point is going to be here, and the image is formed in front of the lens. A far-sighted person cannot bring focal point that close, so the image is formed behind. All right, so here we have one focal point, and here we have another focal point. Which focal point is this one? Object or image? Who votes for object? Yes, this is object focal point. This is image focal, uh, focal point. All right, this will be all for today. And uh, tomorrow we'll talk about this, how to fix our vision using glasses.